you're going to take some details and you can try your hands dirty on that. So uh, my name is Amit. I work for Autodesk. And if you have seen the reInvent videos, so Autodesk is one of the first customers who is using the glue already. And that's in a production. So of course, I will going to use some diagrams. So of course, I'm not violating any copyrights. So that's my disclaimer. So talk today, three things. My talk is basically covering the ETL. Maybe you are using the ETL just for dashboarding, or you may be using machine learning, or you maybe have any analytical purpose. So whatever things you are doing, you are going to use the ETL. What does the ETL stand for? Uh, extract, uh, transform, uh, and loading. So what, what it does, like, from your all prediction data uh, applications, whatever source of uh, data, you just bring that and do some analytics. So you do the extractions, you transform it, and you just load the destinations where you want to run some of your analytics. So basically, the glue is managed service from the, from the Amazon. And uh, it's going to give you the, some of the, it takes away all the worries regarding the schema change and all. So I'm going to cover that. The next thing is uh, I'm going to cover some glue components. Of course, that's how you're going to just try hands on it. And the third one, because it's a serverless, not only serverless, uh, I think you guys know what serverless means. It's going to save some cost, speed up the cluster, and just destroy after, after the uses. But of course, uh, I'm going to cover that, but I'll be there. This is very familiar to many of uh, your ETL pipeline, your analytics pi pipeline. It may, it's very general. So the thing is here, that the three folks which on the left-hand side, what you see here, the data sources. And from the last decades, the format of the data is really drastically changed. You have the new formats. So the guys who are doing already the ETLs, they have to write the script to understand the schema and put into the target data source. So you can see here relational databases. You have the SAMI structure database, JSON, CSV, and all. You also have structures. So what you do today, you take this data source and put into the, uh, you use your ETL uh, jobs or you are using the tools there and put in some staging and do kind of the, the transformations you do. So Glue is going to help you on the ETL portion only. But you may have the questions like, oh, guys, I do have the already some ETL tools available. Informatica is one of the leader. Why? Why can't we use these tools? Of course, you are using these tools. It's not going to replace it. The only thing is, there's a lot of heavy lifting work when you want to extract data from the data, the data source. You have to understand the schema. You have to write the script to understand that. You're in the target side, you have to create the schemas, new tables, new databases there. And you think of the days when you have some changes in the, your source schema. All the downstream systems will have the impact. I'm going to show that. So this is the heavy lifting work. And this work is exactly like the, the courier delivery boy who has to deliver a courier, which is just hand over the packet. It's just two minutes task. But he has to uh, go to the house or the office or wherever. It takes longer time. So this is 70% of the work today, ETL. You invest in the ETLs. Glue is going to help on that. Not only that, this is what I already talked about. If there's some schema changes, your whole pipelines, all the component inside, is going to share the changes as well. You are. They are forced to change. The next thing is you have to maintain the infrastructure. We always forget about this in the big data world. We say, oh, no, man, we have the do, we have the spark. We already can run the job very faster. Of course, you can do. Of course, the problem is gone for the time, but the rest of the problems, the schema changes, doing the heavy lifting work is still there. And if somebody is working on the spark already, they know. They have to trigger the jobs. They have to schedule the jobs. They have to maintain the different different components. What those components are like? Uh, you are scheduling the job. You have the Uzi and all those things kicks in. Again, who is going to provide you the fleet of the infrastructure? You have to maintain the infrastructure, or you are making just the, you are having the EMR already, which do the job, and just the cluster destroy terminate it. But still, you are the one going to configure which component you want. There is a lot of have you lifting work there again? This is glue. And what you see here is going to help you out. And especially the discover, 
whatever I tag there is discover. This is a, the beauty of this product. So what it does, how does this work? It asks you, just you point the glue to the data source and it's going to scan that data source and create a catalog it. Glue maintain its own catalog. Even before you uh, writing any schema or something, what it does, it goes to the destination, whatever your source data, it scans the tables, its schemas and all, and it creates a table for you in the glue catalog. Using that, you are right away and explore the data. So you may have some unformatted data, maybe some JSON file or something like that, which have the like hundreds of thousands of the records or hundreds of thousands of the entities there. It's very difficult without such kind of the tools you can export the data. If data is sitting there, but you're not using phonetics, that's called the dark data. So glue help on this. It is scanned very quickly, very fast. The component, the glue component which help on this is a crawler. I will show you how it does. The next thing that the hand coded ETL jobs, and of course nobody can take it away. You have to do the complex integration, the, the, the data integration, the data joining, so many com, uh, transformation you have to do. But that's what how ETL uh, developer does every day. And that's not gonna take away. The glue is not taking it away. Glue is giving you the more features, they are flexible code. And uh, all the features, it's like most of the features are inbuilt. The third one, the third one is serverless. When you spin up, when you start, you trigger the crawler, which basically scan the schema at the data source, or you spin up the, the glue job. It spins the cluster behind the scene, and there's a spark. And once it does its job, the job is completed, your crawler scans the data and catalog it. It just go away. It gets terminated, so you don't get charged. So heavy lifting work, automation by the glue, components like catalog and crawler, and the second, the, how you do the job authoring, and third one is the, the infrastructure. These are three things. Now let's talk about the first one. The, the screen right there, you can see the diagram on the left is like your data source. It may be anything. I just for sake of uh, this presentation, I have two, the S3, which may have uh, JSON, which may have the SCSV, other parquet format and all. And the next is the group color, uh, color and the right to that is a cat data catalog. The, what the, Crawler does is scan the data source and create the schema in a catalog where right after that you just do uh, explore the data using the Athena or if you have the Japlin you can do even visualization and you have done, not done anything else. By writing, you have not done writing a single line of code yet. The crawler has done. I hide in most of the things there but you see the, the red Rectangle I put there is the left-hand side. This is a component. Database is where you keep your all the schema. The crawler keep the schema there for the schema there. And you see the crawl there. So this screen is basically after the crawler has already scanned the, the data source and infer the schema and create the table for you. So that's the screen represent. If you see the right side, the red, red rectangle there, these are the classifications. So you can see there a list of the, the services there they are maybe the RDS, maybe NoSQL databases, or the other Amazon services, or the formats like CSV, Parquet. It already, the crawler crawls the data source and create these tables there. And right after that, either of the table you can do and query the, using the Athena. So the, most of the things like it understand the partitions. If you have already the workload there, you have the, the data partitioned already there, uh, it understand it well. If you're already using the, some of the things like Hive is a center of today's data warehousing if you are using it the own big data stack. It is a catalog is a high compatible. You can migrate from each to other, the, from one to another one. <coughs> so this is how <coughs> powerful it is. But you say, man, you're kidding. This is something which is already cleansed. If or authorized something, having some data is already very, very organized. If it is DynamoDB or something, Okay, what I tried here is, you see here, it's an array. And the people who are working on ETL world there can understand how the array gives the problems there. How many times your hive says, hey man, uh, no schema definition, something like that, that are. Even I make it more complex. I use the struct. The struct having internal items, those are array. So, I run the crawler, 
does it do anything else? I didn't do any, I didn't write any, any line of code. So it automatically identifies it's a JSON format and it also understands the schema and uh, all those things it does. So how it does resolution, uh, basically resolve the schema. You can see here on the right hand side the, the below diagram, it's flattened. So what you do using the flattened, the, the, the function here, the crawler already flattened it and the prepare and create the table for you. And right after that, you can explode it. So that's the glue is, and this 70% work, uh, I haven't seen any I, crawler took more than two minutes. The last thing I did is my SQL Server ODS data warehouse, the ODS component is on, on premises. And I run the crawler, which is on AWS cloud. It created almost 1,500 tables, and it hardly took three, three minutes. So crawler is too faster. And if you want to do something else, like you want to uh, do some development and uh, want to do visualizations, just create an endpoint to the glue, and you can do all those visualizations. OK. If still that does not satisfy your need, uh, you have even more complex data type, customized data type, which you created for your organization. So glue provide a classifier, and you can put the, the grok patterns, grok patterns, the regular uh, expressions. So you do that to let the crawler understand, oh, this is the data, and this is how a crawler should understand the scan and create the table back in the catalog. All right, so this is how, we, how crawler is basically uh, scanning and make the, the data available for you so that no data is, is sitting as a dark data there. You can do the analytics right away. You can do the visualization, all the stuff. Until this point, you have not done anything by your hand coding stuff, anything else. It's just like you configure a crawler. All things done. Now you have the table. The table over there, what it says, it has some property like the uh, glue already created. But the another problem in the ETL world, what we see is like, hey, my table had changed in the, in the production uh, application database. My table had changed. It added new column. It added, it deleted column. It changed the data type from a string to somebody else, some, some, some data type. So what you want to do is break the pile pine currently. But crawler, what it does, it understand the schema changes the source. And it's very well configurable stuff. And it creates the different version of the table. So what the different version of the table does is you can see over there, two tables got created. And even though you want to see, oh, what the change, you can see there, a new column is added. And you, it's up to you which version of the table you want to use. So this is how he handled the changes. And today's world, you can understand well if something code change in the table, it, it also uh, impact the change across the, the, the pipeline. The last thing is the ETL job, job authoring. It not take away, but give you the flexibility, building functions, all the transformations. Once you configure your job, it basically give, generate the PySpark code in the back, and you can change it. And Coding for the development purpose, you can use the Joplin, and you can also PyCharm integrations and can do, do your development stuff, what you want to do. These are all functions. I'm just running, I mean, just to interest all the time. The last thing is when your job is going to trigger. You have the scheduler, uh, schedulers, and uh, if you are very well familiar with the cron expressions, you can use that, and you can set the dependency, like my first job is successful, then only trigger the second job. So that you can do there very easily, and you can run the ad hoc. Of course, this is the very, very much uh, kind of the, the beauty of this, this uh, I would say the uh, glue triggers. You put in the data in S3, you don't need to schedule. As soon as the data is just S3, it should trigger the job, and just, just does it work. But the problem is S3 is eventual consistent. If people know that, you may see the data immediately, or you may not see. Or even sometimes you see, or sometimes you don't see. It takes time. Glue has a feature like bookmark. When the events trigger the job, it only processes those which are available, those partitions or those uh, part of the data. In the next run, it maintains the, through the, the job bookmark, it processes the rest of that. That is a, one of the very amazing thing. <sighs> Infrastructure, not much stuff on this. People know it's like, when you spin up, it automatically spin up the cluster and destroy after the execution. You are charged for only the, those time when you are running that job, actually. But and 
for each job, you can see how many DPUs. DPUs are a special category of the EC2 instances, which is, data, which is for the data intensive workload. So you can configure like, oh, understand the, the cluster is like serverless. But what if my data is just a 1 GB and it's going to, to spin up around 20 or 100 or 1,000 DPUs behind? You can very well configure it. And this, this gives you a feeling of the production. Like it's not you using the screen of production. You're going to script. But sort of API is available for you. But you configure it one time. What happens if the data is like not as per your best observations? Based on best observation, you say, oh, 20 DPs are well enough for my, my workload. But what about this one? I hope AWS provides some way to provide these metrics based on your work, the data load or something. How we did it? It's very normal programming way. Uh, when there's no data, don't spin up the cluster. That's fine. But whatever, fear more. So what we have done here is there's API given which give the jobs runs. How many job times the job has previously run already, it gives you the statics. When it started on, how many DPs were used? When it's completed, it is still running or completed or so. So you can put your logic, like your, the one instance is already, hey, wait, don't just run my, my next job run. It don't run my job, job next time. So it don't do that. We analyze this for the people from the Java background. The one you see the next is a, is a object, which is the map, exactly Java map. And those from the Python background, it's a dictionary. So what you can read this, this uh, object already. You can get it from the AWS. So what we have done there, we run, we create some kind of the framework, which sends it. And when, before triggering a job, actual ETL job, we decide how many DPUs we want. So to make it more flexible, based on the workload, the data, data, data volume, we spin up a cluster. So that is a, even the serverless is one thing, but we did something very macro, uh, because we run very, very in data intensive and high volume workload. Uh, so I hope I have given all this uh, information, like this is just ETL, so there's a lot to cover on e the glue, and I already, I think I already ate uh, the other time. But that's a quick, I, I talk a lot, but uh, just the two minutes. So here what we are doing, first create your database. Just one line, give your name. Now time to populate your, your tables. How you do? Let's tell the crawler. Hey, crawler, that's your name. And what I want to do is I want to read the data sitting at the S3. And this is, oh, you want to add another source? Yes, just do the, some RDS or whatever S3. Over here, I just did the, all the data sources as three. At the end, what it does, hey, if I encounter the, the, the schema change, what I do? So I say, okay, update it. And then at the end, it say, okay, uh, when you want to run, anytime. And it runs. So what it does after it runs, it populates all the tables. And you can see here, it populates the eight tables now. This is so fast. And you just click on any table on the left, the first column, and you just go and explore the data. This is so simple. And last thing is a job. So when you create the job, you have to have source, you have to target, and in between you have transformation. So a screen in front of you giving the source now. Let's tell which the target database here. And this shows you the mapping. You can change that mapping, and at the end, it generates the PySpark code. You do whatever change you want to do, how many DPs you want to run. And after that, once it succeeds, it just moves the data from here and use the transformation uh, what you have provided. You have done, even after crawler or even after uh, job, what you have done, you go to the table there and choose that option and you are jump to the Athena. There you can query it well. And Athena is also like, you know, Hive compatible and all. So this is the, I did not write anything else for this screens, just a couple of the clicks on the screens, navigations, and my job is done. The crawler is too, too powerful. I mean, uh, and also, there's a lot of things around glue, so I cover minimum. So I hope it's helped you to try hands on that. Thank you. I think you can take one question. Yes, sorry. Sorry? Of course you can do. What is XML?